morning everybody. Uh, my name is Hazel and I'd like to share a bit of my story with you this morning. Um, so I was born in 1982 with congenital heart disease. Um, I had an open heart surgery when I was nine months old um, and then a, my second one in November 2013. During the summer of 2018, I realised I was beginning to struggle again. And by October, I was no longer able to work. Whilst um, we waited um, for my third open heart surgery, um, the, there were many times of uncertainty and um, fear and isolation. Um, but I then had my my surgery in March 2019, a year, um, a year and nine days ago, um, and all all is going well now. But I have learned some lessons um, that to cope with the uncertainty and the fear and the isolation, which I um, thought might help you now. So as I said, my um, my health deteriorated quite quickly in 2018, and all of a sudden we found ourselves. Um, in a very different situation to our normal way of living. Um, it was a new, ever-changing normal. Um, our routines changed. Um, I wasn't working. I couldn't look after the children. Um, I couldn't do household tasks and I couldn't even really socialise. Um, so things seemed really uncertain. Um, and we weren't sure what was going to happen, when it was going to happen. It felt like we were kind of floating further out to sea. Um, so what I discovered was that I needed to focus on the things that I could control. Um, so I could control getting up and getting dressed um, every day and I um, could make a plan for the day. Um, and I learned that the things that I couldn't control, I needed to let God take care of. The last week we sang a song, I Raise a Hallelujah, um, that goes on to say, um, in the middle, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. And I found that this was not easy at all. Um, but the more that I forced myself to do that, um, the easier it became and the calmer I felt. Um, when things got really overwhelming, I would put my headphones in and listen to a new worship album um, on, over and over and kind of put my phone down, leave social media um, that showed me what everybody else was doing um, and listen to, to these songs. So last year I was listening to Matt Redman's new album, Glory Song. There's one song on there called One Day, which was really appropriate um, for me. Um, and I found that if I filled my mind with those certain promises that God gives us, um, it would block out the uncertainty. So in, he in Hebrews 10 verse 23, it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. But this week I found um, a, a free 30 day reading plan on God's promises, um, which I'm going to try. It's on our website called God, um, God at My House. Um, if you want to have a look. Um, so one of those things I was trying to block out was the um, was the fear of what was going to happen. Um, what I discovered was it is better to face that fear full on, to think, to face what is the worst case scenario, what is the worst thing that could happen in, in this case, um, and to be honest with God through this. So he wants to hear our fears and our worries um, and he's big enough to take the anger, the disappointment, the frustration that we have. So when I was going through the double doors into my second surgery, um, I heard God speak really clearly um, and almost kind of in that audio, audible voice saying, um, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you. Um, and I know that being a Christian doesn't necessarily protect me from disease and suffering. I don't believe that that comes from God because he loves us and he um, 
understands completely what it is to face death. Um, he wants to comfort us. Um, I also learned that it's important to have a, a plan for that worst case scenario and put some things in place just in case. And that's really good advice with us in our current situation. Um, the advice is to, to be prepared for if you do get sick, what is the plan? Who have you? Are you have you got things in? Have you got somebody who's going to um, be able to bring you food um, and and medicine? Um, and facing that kind of worst case scenario does actually reduce the anxiety and fear. Um, so last year I ended up being off work for a total of eight months, um, and lots of times I felt very isolated. I think we are created to, for connections and relationships with, for connection with God and connection with others. So when this is taken away from us and we have to physically isolate, it goes against our natural instincts. So at GBC, there's lots of ways that we can still connect with each other. And I would really encourage you to keep in touch with people by letter, by phone, by other forms of technology. If you belong to a small group, I would encourage you to be honest with your small group leader when they contact you um, and ask for help if you need it, practical help, but also if you're struggling mentally or emotionally, spiritually with this whole situation, then um, tell them and just saying out, out loud and having someone pray for you does make a huge difference. If you're not in a small group, then someone from church should still be contacting you as well. Or if you're not normally connected with GBC, please do contact the office and um, we'd love to hear from you. Or maybe get the support from um, the community support groups like the mutual COVID-19 mutual aid support group or the God Manchester Time Bank. I also discovered in these times of isolation, setting small realistic goals help to keep me positive. For example, going for a walk every day or even eating my dinner at, at the table. Um, help, just celebrating those goals helped to keep me feeling positive. Um, I also started a I'm looking forward to list. I saved it on my phone saying things like I'm looking forward to seeing my colleagues Go, watching Joshua play football, going swimming with Sophie. Um, I saw a really good idea this week about um, if you or your family say, start to say, I wish we could, blah, 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 write it on a post-it note and put it in a jar. And then once we're out of lockdown to start doing those things. So the first thing on my list and my jar would be, I really wish we could celebrate Ben's 40th birthday with all of our family. Um, I'd just like to finish by reading um, an extract from Pete Gregg's book, How to Pray. It's in the chapter of an un unanswered prayer um, where he encourages us to hold on to God's love during those tough times. Um, so it says, at such times of unknowing, there's nothing good and there's nothing good in the pain. And we're helpless and hopeless as a baby with chicken pox. It's tempting to doubt God's kindness and to pull away from the father's arms. But this is the very time that we need his comfort more than ever before. His comfort comes to us through the support of others, through the words of reassurance and hope in the Bible and through the solace of prayer. Do not be anxious about anything, says the Apostle Paul, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is peace for those who pray. That's certainly been my experience last year. Um, and I hope that hearing about this a bit has helped, maybe helped you.